I'm Dr. Marvin Sprouse. And I'm Dr. Charlene Sprouse. We've been married for 24 years, and I know a little bit about Charlene, and uh, tonight we're going to talk about one of our favorite subjects because we've done so much work with people mm -hmm. who have severe problems from codependency. In order to describe what codependency is, let me begin by telling you what addiction is. And you know us, we go straight for the simple, really simple definition. Addiction is when a substance, a behavior, or another person has power over you. When you lose your addiction, you gain the power over that substance, that person, or that behavior. You can be addicted to playing video games. I have been. Or sports. <laughs> or, or watching TV. All sorts of things can be addictive. And if that has power over you, if you're watching TV when you should be doing something else that you want to be doing, and you don't seem capable of getting up and walking away from that television and doing it, buddy bubba, that's an addiction. Mm -hmm. Now, codependency is an addiction to a person. And I have heard codependency described humorously as a person who is drowning offshore and they don't want to yell for help because they're afraid they'll they'll bother the people on the beach. I've heard uh, codependency described as dying and seeing someone else's life flash before your eyes. Codependency is putting another person above you, which can be a good thing to a point, but when it gets so ridiculous that you let that other person decide how you're going to feel and you begin to take a false responsibility for their behavior, that's codependency. A codependent will look at her alcoholic husband and say, oh man, I don't know what I'm doing that makes him drink. Oh my goodness, I have no idea what I do that makes him so mad that he hits me. Maybe if I just iron better, maybe if I just clean better, maybe if I can keep the kids quieter. Yeah, it's, it's a, that's neurotic thinking, ladies and gentlemen. That's codependency. And codependents believe that they have an unusual amount of power over other people power and responsibility. You know, if Charlene does something really, <clears throat> she's never done anything like that, <laughs> but if she did something stupid, uh, and I was a real severe codependent, I'd say, wonder what I did to make her do that. Mm -hmm. I'd take responsibility for her doing that. And it just doesn't work that way. We're always at choice. So if you're thinking, what am I doing to make my husband beat me? Quit thinking that. That's thinking, thinking. And Cod it, yeah, codependents set other people up to need them. They do everything for every person in the family so that they will need them, like them, want them, love them. And that focus is outside. It's not in, in here where it should be. And it's a, false, it's a false love. You know it's false because you have to do something to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Love is what it is. If it's there, it's there. You can't make another person love you. You can't cause that to happen. If they do, thank you, Jesus. Just thank the Lord and continue to march because God did it, you didn't and the other person went along with it. They decided to love you. You're always at choice. And a lot of people say, he makes me so mad. No, he doesn't. His behavior le 